today we are going to see about megaloblastic anemia megaloblastic anemia it is mostly caused due to deficiency of vitamin b12 and folic acid vitamin b12 and folic acid are the coenzymes which are required for the synthesis of dna and due to this if vitamin b12 and folic acid are deficient then there is inhibition of dna synthesis if the dna is not synthesized properly then it leads to ineffective hematopoiesis and the ineffective hematopoiesis leads to enlarged rbcs so if you examine the blood if you examine the rbcs of the patient who is suffering from megaloblastic anemia you will see that the size of the rbc is enlarged or we can say the mcv is increased that is mean corpuscular volume now megaloblastic anemia it can be defined as a red blood cell disorder due to the inhibition of dna synthesis that leads to an effective hematopoiesis and distinctive morphological changes including abnormally enlarged erythroid precursors and rbcs now we'll see the factors which are responsible for megaloblastic anemia the first is it is either vitamin b12 or vitamin b12 is also known as cobalamin so megaloblastic anemia it can be uh, said to occur due to deficiency of vitamin b12 or cobalamin deficiency then the next etiological factor is folic acid and the third is it can occur due to both uh, the deficiency of vitamin b12 and folic acid now we'll look closely uh, towards the absorption of cobalamin or vitamin b12 as you all know vitamin b12 is a complex organometallic compound and is also known as cobalamin humans are totally dependent on dietary vitamin b12 vitamin b12 is not synthesized in our bodies daily requirement dose of vitamin b12 is 2 to 3 micrograms vitamin b12 is not freely available in the food it is bound to some proteins and this protein needs to be cleaved uh, and hence the pepsin it acts in cleaving this vitamin b12 in the stomach the free cobalamin then binds to hepatocorin hepatocorin is secreted by saliva now uh, this hepatocorin or hepatocorin is also said to be r binder it binds to cobalamin and this complex is cleaved by protease and the free cobalamin it then binds with the intrinsic factor now intrinsic factor is very 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 essential in the absorption of vitamin b12 intrinsic factor is released by the parietal cells in the uh, stomach the vitamin b12 it forms a complex with intrinsic factor and this complex it moves into the uh, towards the ileum now when this complex reaches to the ileum at that time a receptor called as cubulin is expressed on the surface of the ileum now uh, this cubulin receptor it causes complete endocytosis of the complex now here inside the cells of the ileum the cobalamin is free and it associates with the major transporter and the name of that major transporter is transcobalamin 2 and this complex of cobalamin and transcobalamin 2 is secreted in the plasma transcobalamin delivers cobalamin to liver and other body cells bone marrow and gid the vitamin b12 absorption uh, is seen as cobalamin in the food and in the bound form and active and they are released by cooking and by the proteolysis in the stomach and intestine vitamin b12 is not soluble so absorption depends on various transfer factors like the r factor intrinsic factor and transcobalamin 2 now we'll look at vitamin why vitamin b12 deficiency is caused the first reason is due to inadequate intake uh, mostly the pure vegetarians they suffer from vitamin b12 
deficiency because the content of vitamin B12 is higher in animal food products. Then it also occurs in the old and bedridden patients uh, because the, uh, they lack the inability to absorb vitamin B12. Also, vitamin B12 deficiency might occur after gastric surgery, lack of hydrochloric acid in the gastric juice, lack of intrinsic factor due to autoantibodies to the parietal cells. There are some drugs like metformin, proton pump inhibitors. They also inhibit the absorption of cobalamin. Now we'll take a look at the functions of cobalamin. Vitamin B12 plays an important role in general cell metabolism. Also, it helps in the maintenance of integrity of the nervous system. Vitamin B12 act as a coenzyme for two main biochemical reactions in the body. The biochemical reactions are, the first is it act as methyl cobal cobalamin, methyl B12, in the methylation of homocysteine to methionine by methyl tetrahydrofolate. Now, N-methyl tetrahydrofolic acid, it is the principal form of folic acid in the plasma. It gives off its one methyl group to methyl cobalamine. Hence, N-methyl tetrahydrofolic acid is converted to tetrahydrofolic acid because the methyl group is donated to uh, cobalamin to form methyl cobalamin. The cobalamin, it takes the methyl group and it gets converted into methyl cobalamin. Now this tetrahydrofolic acid, it is responsible for conversion of deoxyuridine monophosphate that is DUMP to deoxythymidine monophosphate that is DTMP and this DTMP is the building block for DNA. So DTMP is a building block for DNA synthesis. Now this methylcobalamin, it is responsible for conversion of homocysteine to methionine. So fundamental cause of e DNA impaired synthesis is in vitamin B12 deficiency because there is decreased availability of tetrahydrofolate as most of the cobalamin is trapped as N-methyl tetrahydrofolate. So if there is no tetrahydrofolate, then, then, then there cannot occur conversion of DUMP to DTMP. And in this way, it leads to... Um, impaired DNA synthesis. So when this reaction is impaired, folate metabolism is dearranged and it results in defective DNA synthesis and it results into megaloblastic anemia. Now the second reaction is uh, it acts as adenosyl cobalamin, that is adenosyl B12 in propionate metabolism for the conversion of methyl methylmanonyl coenzyme A to succinyl coenzyme A. Propionyl coenzyme A is converted to methyl malonyl coenzyme A, which is converted to succinyl coenzyme A using adenosyl B12. Now, if your body is deficient of vitamin B12, it will be result, resulting into increased levels of methyl malonyl coenzyme A in the plasma and urine. And ultimately, it will lead to abnormal fatty acid deposition into the neuronal lipids. Now we'll see about folate deficiency. A deficiency of folic acid also results in megaloblastic anemia and it have same pathological features as that caused by vitamin B12 deficiency. The sources of folic acid are, it is present in different plants, bacteria and animal tissues. Its main dietary sources are fresh green leafy vegetables and fruits, liver, kidney, and to a lesser extent, muscle meat, cereals, and milk. They are also uh, rich in folic, folic acid. The average daily requirement is almost about 100 to 200 microgram. Now we'll take a look at folate deficiency. It occurs due to inadequate intake that can be due to poor diet. It can occur due to old and bedridden patients because again, the absorption capacity here is reduced. 
it can occur in the patients who are admitted in the icus it can occur due to overcooking of the vegetables because the heat it it is responsible for degradation of the folic acid there might occur um, folic deficiency might occur due to increased requirement as in the case of pregnancy and lactating mothers folic deficiency also occurs in growing infants if it is inadequately uh, taken in then it occurs in patients who are suffering from hemolytic anemia then drugs like folic acid antagonist especially the methotrexate it reduces absorption of folic acid in the body chronic alcoholism it inhibits folic acid absorption and increases the folic acid excretion through the urine also there might occur folic acid deficiency due to inability to absorb folic acid following gastric surgery or chronic diarrhea now we'll take a look at functions of folic acid folate plays an essential role in cellular metabolism it acts as coenzyme for two important biochemical reactions which involve transfer of one carbon unit that is either methyl and or formal group to various other compounds these reactions are as under the first one is it acts as thymidylate synthetase reactions formation of deoxythymylate monophosphate that is dmp from its precursor deoxyuridylate monophosphate dump the second reaction is methylation of homocysteine to methionine this both reactions we have seen under vitamin b12 or cobalamin uh, functions the basic biochemical abnormality which is common to both vitamin b12 and folate is a block in the pathway of dna synthesis and there is an interrelationship between vitamin b12 and folate metabolism in the methylation reaction of homocysteine to methionine so as we have seen that dtmp is not synthesized properly so the dna is not ultimately the dna is deficient so the cell it cannot undergo mitosis and this inability to undergo mitosis results in enlargement of the rbc because in this case what is inhibited dna synthesis is inhibited but rna synthesis is normal okay so the cell rbc it contains normal rna but it is deficient in dna and hence it cannot undergo mitosis the inability to synthesize dna leads to ineffectual erythropoiesis resulting in excess hemoglobin and enlarged erythroid precursors being produced now we'll look at the cl clinical features the first one is this type of anemia is going to show you the symptoms of anemia along with that it is going to show some neurological symptoms and some gastrointestinal complaints like other than this the symptoms are weakness palpitation shortness of breath light headedness paler or jaundice premature graying of hair lack of energy then neurological symptoms include the syndrome usually usually begins with paresthesia that is numbness and tingling sensation sensation in the feet and fingers and there is difficulty in maintaining the balance and walking vitamin b12 deficiency causes demyelination of the peripheral nerves the spinal cord and the brain and which ultimately results in more severe neurological symptoms when it affects the spinal cord it causes spastic ataxia that is stiffness of the muscles with uncoordinated movement at at this point the uh, the brain it starts to undergo a uh, neuro de degeneration that is the brain um, it results into dementia psychotic depression and paranoid schizophrenia this has been termed as megaloblastic madness the gastrointestinal complaints include there is loss of appetite there is glossitis that is a red red sore smooth tongue also there is diarrhea 
Now we'll see diagnostic tools which are used to determine if a person is suffering from megaloblastic anemia or not. Uh, mostly it involves full blood uh, count, that is complete blood count, FBC or CBC. If you go for CBC, there is decreased hemoglobin content, there is increased MCV because of the enlarged um, RBCs, there is decreased number of WBC. Bone marrow spear shows uh, that myeloid cell changes, giant bands, metamyelocytes, and hypersegmentation. Biochemistry, biochemistry test involves hyperbilirubinemia, increased lactate dehydrogenase. There is also one specific test called as Schilling test. It is used to determine whether there is a faulty absorption of vitamin B12. In this case, vitamin B12 is uh, ingested in the patient and it is tracked using radio technology. Now the treatment involves vitamin B12 injections, iron and vitamin C supplements sometimes, then diet changes. Uh, you have to increase your uh, content of the diet. You have to focus more on fruits and green leafy vegetables also you have to focus on some uh, meat products thank you